In this set, we sail into a marina where the boat work continues. Dinghy davit hangers, mount the Starlink, up the mast for the wind transducer, fix the swim ladder and refrigeration, fit a new life raft, load provisions, squeeze in some socialising, then we sail again. We're Aussies Robin Karen, who took early retirement in 2010 to sail the world. Join us on the 42 foot catch Our Dream Time as we strive to make the most of every minute of every single day. Welcome to Series 3, Up, Around and Into Indo. We have left Trinity Inlet and we are heading to Yorkies North Marina this morning. We picked a great day to get out here. <laughs> it's blowing only, only 15 to 20 but it's been really showery and of course we've been getting the squall wind with it. We've got a bit of a chop out here only because there's wind against tide but look it's only for a short time so that's all good. Um, yeah, Cairns Airport says we're getting 15 to 20s and that's probably about right. Our wind gauge is still not working. That's one of the reasons we're going into the marina, isn't it? To get those things done. So Monday we have confirmed that we have the electrician on board and then Tuesday Rob will be up the mast to make sure that we have a wind gauge working and then we'll also be fitting our new life raft. So many things for us to do while we're in the marina. We've only put the Jenny out and we've actually reefed her. Um, as we're motor sailing, it's only that short amount of time, so to put all sails up would be a bit of a waste, really. Rob gets his third cup of coffee for the day. This is the last of his pot in his thermos coffee pot. We absolutely love this product. Um, no, we didn't get it for free. We're just telling you because it is a brilliant thing to have on board. Rob's first coffee was at six this morning and it's now quarter past seven and his coffee is still nice and hot. He's had three large cups and he doesn't fill it right to the top. So you actually do get four mugs out of it. So it is fabulous. Um, we've actually got a link for it on our Dreamtime sale blog in the galley section. So if you'd like to have a look at it, um, on Amazon, I think they're about $45. They're absolutely brilliant. Put on your thermos, another thermos product on board. Let the boat jobs begin again. I was climbing down in the dinghy this morning for what reason? Uh, I'm going to replace the, the fittings on these hangers because we used the curly top and it's, it's coming off. So I have new capture ones that I'll put through and then this will not have any risk of coming off. Um, but guess who lowered the dinghy before putting the mug back in because he forgot about it. <laughs> you get that? Uh, we went to these aluminium bars to suspend the dinghy because we used to use lines but they always stretched and by using the bar we found we can get the dinghy a lot higher up to the davits 
hence a lot further out of the water. So when you get a big following sea, uh, the dinghy's not getting um, shoved around by waves so much. Um, really have been happy the way it works. But the, these aren't up to it, so we'll do the change to these. Getting my work out this morning. Making scones for Mother's Day. Hold on. Rob, why aren't you making these for me? Because I'm absolutely crap at it. I just eat them. <sighs> You'll enjoy those anyway. Oh, I will, without you. What? <laughs> That's not fair. <laughs> well, that's it. That's our new communication system. We hope that it works. Um, Starlink, of course. We've mounted our dishy in a um, standard fishing rod holder and slid in some PVC pipe inside of that. Just had to put a slot in the back of it for where the cable plugs into dishy itself. Slid it in, was um, all nice and secure. And what I've done is I've just um, used some good tape right over the lot to keep it nice and waterproof. Uh, seeing they make these to go up on roofs and things, I don't think it's that critical, but salt's always uh, the enemy of all electronics. Um, yeah, we went with Starlink. And of course, very recently, they've just changed all their uh, enforcement of their terms of service. So it's working here, that's fantastic. We're hoping it's going to work right up the coast for us, um, but we may have to move to their pay per gigabyte use for ocean use. If that's the case, well, that's the case. That's what you have to do for service. Um, but it'll be really nice to know that, A, we've got good weather forecasts um, and we can look at the full range of weather services when we've got in that service with the staff. Um, that keeps us in communication and hopefully we're going to be able to upload some videos for you. So, um, nice addition to our dream time um, and we'll let you know how we go because we're going into Indonesia where they are putting up satellites but as such they say service near future. Um, but we have heard anecdotally from people up there that theirs has been working fine so we shall wait and see. Uh, what we've got is uh, our wind instrument and the connections. There's a fair bit of corrosion in there. It's pretty green. Uh, I've used the Karen's uh, nail board, emery board, whatever, to clean them up. I've got some uh, electrical contact uh, spray. So I'm going to spray all that in. Um, and then we'll tighten it all back up and see what we've got. Hopefully, we'll have some wind instrument working again. As always, not a bad view when you get up here. We can hear all this work going on with uh, earth movers and everything, but we couldn't actually see it from the boat. You get up here and yeah, nice boat ramp and recreational uh, car park for the fishermen. That should be operational pretty soon. Okay, I'm going to put the camera down, see if we can put this thing back together again and hopefully have a wind instrument that works. No joy, unfortunately. Wheels go around, the direction vane's there, but all we're getting is direction, we're not getting any wind speed. I've had it in and out four times, cleaned all the connections, I'm just about out of ideas. A few of the little bolts that hold our treads on for our swim ladder um, have come loose and actually fallen out. So I think it's all about when we leave the swim ladder down in the water, if there's current, this part of it just vibrates a lot. Um, so replacing them with a bolt with a nylock nut on it and hopefully that's going to, uh, to stop the problem. But as we're getting ready to go, there's just a myriad of these little fiddly jobs to do. But it's called a boat. And when you own a boat and live on a boat, 
you definitely have to learn how to be a jack of all trades even if you're the master of none. And that's another noisy flight aircraft going straight over the top of us at about 300 feet. So that's much tighter, that shouldn't be going anywhere. And in the meantime, the fridge mechanics have been on board doing their thing as well. So the important question, do I have cold beer? Of course. <laughs> Excellent. In a couple of hours at least anyway. <laughs> <laughs> nothing else, nothing else is important, is it? Yeah. <laughs> that was perfect. <laughs> I am so pleased, Mike. Well, that's how I knew that the fridge wasn't as good, because each day the beer was a bit warmer. Yeah, yeah. And this isn't good, this isn't right. Our life raft lives under our transom table. And this is where you see Karen slicing and dicing all those fish that we've been uh, lucky enough to catch on the way up. Just a simple table that's quick release straps. So in the event of an emergency, that's off straight away. We've got full, then we have uh, full access to our life raft and uh, over she goes. Now this is a four persons Zodiac life raft and the company just don't make these anymore. So therefore, in theory, some of the parts aren't available so we weren't able to get it serviced. It's inside it, we've got all sorts of emergency provisions that we actually had packed in it when we had this service last time. Uh, they include things like 100 US dollars in cash, because you never know where you're gonna end up and it'd be nice to have some money when you get ashore for emergencies. But we also have copies of our passports, our driver's licenses. We've got a spare pair of glasses each so that if we lose our glasses, you know, abandoning ship, when we get in the life raft, we've, we can see again. There was a tragic case where a uh, sailor had gone into his life raft, lost his glasses, had his handheld radio, but couldn't read the uh, GPS coordinates on it to tell the authorities. He was speaking to them, but he could not read his position. So that uh, delayed his rescue considerably. So we have glasses packed away in there. Um, and in our grab bag, so just if you're as blind as us poor old people are, a really, really good tip. Of course there's emergency uh, rations and that sort of thing there as well. But this one, we'll be opening it up and getting our $100 cash back and our other goods and uh, bits and pieces. And then quite seriously, sadly, it will be going to the skip because, um, yeah, it's not much good for anything else. Uh, we will check with the local sailing club, etc., whether they want it to use for you know um, any drills or practice or training. But other than that, it's we really wouldn't like to see someone put it in their boat because if it's not good enough for us, it, it's not good enough for anyone else. And there's our uh, brand new Viking life raft that will take its place, and we can tick one more job off the list. Life raft is fitted. Table's back on, she's all strapped on secure. Lifeline is attached to the uh, mounting bracket and it's ready for deployment. Now we hope that it's another 3,000 plus dollars that we've spent that we never ever need to use. It's a caramel martini. <laughs> I love having a chef on board to come and have sundowners with us. She brings amazing stuff. Hello Leonie, welcome to our galley and Hello, to Robert. Dreamtime Sail. <laughs> and we had a lovely day today. We did. We took food, captains, boats <laughs> and strange people that we met in laundromats. Laundromat. <laughs> Leonie was so kind to take me to the laundromat today because we had over a month's worth of washing to do <laughs> and it was fabulous. But yes, we went to a gorgeous French coffee shop after that had cake and coffee and then we went to a little shop next door that happened to be a bit of op shopping yes and I bought a copper pot <laughs> what you do when you cooks and you go straight to the pots you don't go to the clothing Karen has pocketed me <laughs> look at this yum yum
not normally put ice in it, but it is. It is. <laughs> yeah, it's it tropical. Is hot, hot and tropical here. Yeah, it's hot and tropical. Wow. See, now everyone will think that's all we do is drink, drink cocktails. cocktails. <laughs> well, Some someone's got to do it. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Oh, yum. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. Trolley load number two coming aboard. And I reckon you'll have to put the camera down and make some room. Come on. What are you waiting for? <laughs> Actually, I just think I want Colts to take it all back. It looks like a lot of work to get this all stored. Oh boy. I thought every locker, nook and cranny for storage was full already. This is going to be a challenge. I'm sure Karen's up to it. I think I'll just stay out of the way. Good morning everybody. We are leaving at Yorkies Knob Marina or Half Moon Bay Marina as it's uh, correctly called and we're heading up to Port Douglas. I think we only got about 25 miles. Yeah 25.3 miles is showing and uh, lovely morning. Nice and still the wind should get up uh, through the morning but we'll be motoring early that's for sure. We were intending to be introducing our crew to you about now, but unfortunately our crew has returned to Cairns from Brisbane carrying a pretty bad case of the flu. So A, it wouldn't be pleasant for them to be on board, and B, we don't want to catch it. So they are actually going to recuperate in Cairns we couldn't extend in uh, the marina here because all the berths are booked, including ours. It's booked from today. So we had to get out. Um, so we're gonna move up to Port Douglas and we will wait for our crew there. And they'll be able to just uh, get themselves up there and join us then. And that's when we'll introduce them to you. Well, you know, it's just got enough wind to almost stay filled. I'd love to turn off the engine and sail, but I think we would be just bobbing around doing nothing. As the sun rose, so did the wind leaving us with a very pleasant downwind sail along a beautiful piece of coast.
On a traditional long keel boat, any marina entrance is a bit of an adventure. But fortunately, we were allocated an end berth, which made life pretty simple and gave us a nice secure spot to sit and wait for our crew to be fit. Shepherding mum in, shepherding mum out. <laughs> what's, what's going on here? <laughs> oh, cocktails on a cocktails. Saturday. <laughs> it's a spice Moroccan pomegranate cocktail. And it's really nice. <laughs> <laughs> I could get used to these. This could get messy. <laughs> Very. Gloriously messy. As you can see from the dates we put in our graphics, we're usually a couple of months ahead of the videos in real time. That means right now, we're into Indonesia and off exploring these amazing islands. If you'd like to see where we are in real time, then please join the Our Dreamtime virtual crew over on Patreon. You can see our spot tracker map and our regular sit rep videos and our photos. As always, we'd like to say a huge thank you to everyone who supports these videos by watching, liking, commenting, and especially our virtual crew members on Patreon and Ko-fi. This Dreamtime Sale channel wouldn't exist without your support. If you haven't subscribed yet, please think about doing so. It's absolutely free and helps us more than you can imagine. If you hit the bell button, you'll also be notified every time we release a new video. See you next time.